Today we're going to talk about a very important concept in physics which is called the Brownian motion. The Brownian motion was discovered by an English botanist whose family name was Brown, obviously, but he wasn't working with gases, he was working with plants. And he found out or noticed that when he put some pollen grains in a container with some liquid, these pollen grains used to move randomly. They were not static. They wouldn't stay in one place. On the other hand, they were moving randomly in different directions, going up and down and colliding with the wall of the container, hitting it and returning back again and so on. So, it was said that the gas molecules in a medium can be compared to these pollen grains and three postulates were put. The first one is that the gas molecules are in a continuous random motion, just like these pollen grains. The second one is that these uh, gas molecules are going to collide with each other and are going to collide with the walls of the container too, just like the pollen grains. The third postulate is that there are intermolecular spaces between these gas molecules and uh, these intermolecular spaces are more or less than a constant value depending on the uh, physical conditions and the container that has the gas and so on. So, for example, in order to prove the second postulate that the gas molecules are going to collide with each other and with the walls of the container. This can be very simply uh, proven when we look at the smoke clouds in the air they move in a random motion. This random motion is uh, determined by the movement of the gas molecules in the air when they collide with the carbons in the smoke. So when the number of collisions upon a carbon atom increases it will force the carbon atom to move in the opposite direction by the summation of all the vectors of the uh, collisions it will move to the opposite direction and this is of course according to Newton's law so this is what causes the smoke to move randomly in the air for the third postulate which says that there are intermolecular spaces between uh, the gas molecules uh, this one is interesting so we can put two uh, test tubes like that one inverted and one that stays normally and we'll separate between both of them with a uh, cardboard or a piece of paper and the upper tube will have ammonia gas NH3 and the one below will have hydrogen chloride gas. Now ammonia is denser than hydrogen chloride so technically if there are intermolecular spaces between the hydrogen chloride gas molecules and we remove this separation the molecules of ammonia will drop down due to the density, due to the gravity, so it will drop down. And also, hydrogen chloride molecules are lighter, so if the separation is removed, these molecules will go upwards. But if there are no intermolecular spaces, disregarding the density, it will not be allowed for hydrogen chloride to go upwards or ammonia to go downwards because there is no space. And when we remove the separation, this card or the piece of paper, we will find out that a cloud of uh, white gas will start to form at the point of contact between the two tubes and it will start to move to the ends of both tubes till it fills both tubes. So this proves that there are intermolecular spaces and this new gas is ammonium chloride, NH4Cl, ammonium chloride. And it's uh, a gas which forms white clouds. 
So simply that was the Brownian motion. I hope it was easy and clear and until the next time I thank you for watching and see you.